right. Well, welcome everybody um, to our Tuesday morning distance Reiki share. Um, just to kind of give everybody an idea of what the share consists of is we always do uh, like a Re Reiki talk where we're talking about different subjects and how to use Reiki in these different subjects or also different like Reiki topics such as you know, what can you expect in a Reiki one and two class, a master class, so the actual or history of Reiki, so actual Reiki topics, or just different things that we have that go on in our life that we talk about how to use Reiki for. Um, we also always do either a guided invocation or a guided meditation, Reiki journey. And then we also go into breakout rooms um, with a group of small people, maybe anywhere from three to four people, and we give and receive Reiki with each other. So all experience levels are welcome at our Distance Reiki Share. It's every Tuesday morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, um, usually to about 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and also, you know, we always do say that you're also welcome, you know, if you can't make it right on time, um, you need to leave early. I know uh, there's definitely people that need that are at work and can't participate in the breakout room. So they need to leave after kind of the talk and vocation portion of it or meditation portion of it. Um, and so that's always welcome as well. Um, we also always uh, publish these on Thursdays on our YouTube channel and our podcast platform. Um, so if you want to go ahead and watch it, or if you want to, um, you know, do the audio version or video version of the guided meditation or journey, whichever we're going to be doing that day, um, you can catch those on the other platforms. Some people just miss the day and they catch it later on those, or if you want to go back and do one, uh, let's say you were at work and you weren't able to fully participate in the meditation, um, uh, you know, you can go onto those different platforms and check it out. Um, I will say that a few people have told us that in the meditations, there is some mid-roll ads in some of them, um, some are in the beginning and some are midway through. So you can always check it out on our podcast platform if it's one of those that does that. So anyways, there's that piece of it. Um, if you don't have any Reiki experience, again, you're al always welcome to participate in any portion of the distance Reiki share. Um, if you want to go into breakout rooms too, you're welcome to do that. And we're also open to all lineages. There's always, um, almost always experienced people in the breakout rooms, and they're always happy to um, share Reiki with you if you don't have any Reiki experience. So it's also a good way to try it. If you're just Reiki curious, as Andrea Kennedy of Mainstream Reiki always says, Reiki curious um, is a great term to use. So you can just kind of go and check it out and see what it's all about. All right. So having said all of that, um, I'm Robin. Um, I'm also here with Danny. Hi, everybody. Um, and Colleen is still in Japan. Uh, again, she's teaching on Mount Karama with William Rand, and she is in the Karuna class currently. Um, well, not in this moment, because I think it's about one in the morning there, but in general, she's uh, still teaching on Mount Karama. And we think hopefully she will be back at the Reiki share um, next week. So sometimes with the time share, you never, or time change, you never know. Um, but we're hoping she'll be back next week. So we are leading the, the charge today again, um, and just really excited to be here with you all. Um, so we are kind of continuing our topic of new beginnings. However, we've kind of graduated from that idea of it um, to, um, you know, what happens after that. Um, I will say that on a separate note this week, it's a really big energetic week. Um, we have the um, eclipse tomorrow. So we have a full solar eclipse um, tomorrow. <laughs> Just making sure I say that wrong. I mean, right. Um, and it is in with new moon in Aries and still, so the full thing is an Aries eclipse. So there's really big energy with that, um, going on. People are really feeling it, needing that support. You might be one that is feeling it. 
Um, you know, we know that Aries is a, um, <clears throat> I'm an Aries, so my birthday was this past weekend. Um, so I say this with love and a knowing of myself <laughs> that we can be big energy. Um, Aries can have big energy. So it can be big energy for, for people this week. And I just know from, you know, supporting lots of people that you might be feeling it as well and know that this can be um, contributing to it. And as, yes, Kelly said in the chat, um, that uh, Mercury also goes retrograde this week too. So uh, we've got a lot of things going on. Um, and if you're feeling it, just know that it is um, very normal and it can be challenging. Others of you might be in a place where the momentum of the Aries energy is actually really helpful, especially if you are in you know, kind of that new beginnings or wanting to manifest different aspects of your life. Um, and so using the momentum of this big energy uh, can be uh, super helpful. So, and then also with Mercury retro going retrograde, we are in a shadow period. So things might be really amping up for you. It can really um, be a place where uh, communication can be challenged, whether it's from people, that communication can be challenging, um, or, you know, different pieces of, I know we have tech, can have technological issues, um, things like those kinds of things can um, also have challenges. But between the two energies together, the communication and the big Aries energy, um, it, it can feel, everything can feel very amplified right now. Um, so just a kind of a heads up on that. I know um, some things, sometimes you're like, what is this that's going on for me? Like being able to identify a contributing factor can be uh, very, very helpful in that. Um, this is really a place where Reiki can come in and be really helpful. Um, in these time frames, as we have been talking about, it may be a part of when you're in a new beginning. It may not be right now. <clears throat> and just since we've been talking about that topic, um, let's say you're in momentum, things are going great. And then just life happens, either something out of your control um, happens to change your trajectory or just give you like that. <gasps> you know, that pause, that big, that thing can feel really big. It, it not just can feel really big. It can be really big. There can be these really big energetic pieces that can contribute to that. There can be world events that can contribute to that, that can cause, um, either a pause or it can cause, a kind of a, I don't want to say misdirection because sometimes the misdirection is the right direction, but it can change the trajectory of the path either that you thought you were on, um, or it can just, you know, kind of be a roadblock on the things that you're on. So I know that there's the opposite piece of it where everything is working out swimmingly. It's like you're on the path, you've set these intentions, you're looking to manifest them and, <clears throat> and, um, and you're just flowing with the energy and everything is just working out great. So I don't want to um, dismiss that piece of it because that's true too. It's just a, a, so much of the time when we need our tools, our spiritual tools, and Danny's going to talk um, about um, some of this, is that so much when we need our spiritual tools are the times when things can be very challenging or feel very challenging or you have those roadblocks because how do we um, navigate our emotions? How do we navigate what we need? And also I don't want to bypass um, that for other people or even bypass it for myself, that that can be very true. And um, that you know, there are those times where you really need that support. Um, so, uh, Danny, I don't know if you want to go ahead and talk about some of the things that 
you were talking about yesterday when we were talking about that, as far as your tools are concerned, and then, you know, uh, text. Yeah, uh, I think that it's in our life right now, we have a plan typically, right? We have a plan, whether it's going out to dinner or being with our kids or a new job, we have a plan. And when, so, when there's a hiccup in that plan and it can spiral us into mind chatter, um, that Reiki really comes in handy. And I love um, Colleen's Reiki on the fly technique of just bringing it in. It doesn't have to be, you know, ritual symbols and all that. Just be like, oh my gosh. I mean, uh, I can't say the symbol, um, you know, the Usui master symbol. I'm just like, bring it in I'm like that to me, it's like, whoa, that really is helping me right now. And gosh, I mean, all of us are going through, um, like Robin said, we're, we have this great momentum in life. It's amazing. And then there's these things that are a little stagnant. And just remember that Reiki can, um, a Reiki session, actually, just a Reiki session with somebody. It doesn't have to be a full hour. It, I mean, we, there's a hundred of us here today um, just talking to somebody and being like, well, this is going on. This is really big to them. And just hearing, having a space to be heard is really important. And I think a lot of times, too, is when we think we're in this mind chatter and this, this momentum that's not really great, it's actually just a channel like a radio channel or, you know, we can just flick it a tiny bit, a tweak it a tiny bit. And I, to me, that's what Reiki is. It's a tiny spiritual tweak of like, oh yeah, it's actually, actually, I'm in gratitude for a lot. Actually, I am joyful. Actually, a lot is going on. And so it's just kind of a, to me, Reiki on the fly is, is a reminder of, um, taking that pause, taking that breath. Yeah. And listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Danny and I were talking yesterday and she said something really great that, um, pause patience and listening. And I thought that that was really helpful. And what Reiki can help you get to is the idea that you can pause because sometimes that is where we go into that kind of spiral piece of it. That's where we can go into that mind chatter piece of it is um, when we don't realize that we're in it. We don't realize that I'm in it. Mind chatter, you know, you're kind of going through this unconsciously. This is happening for you. You're in full story. You're in full, you're in the thick of it. You're in full pieces of it. And you know, just that, that remembering of this tool that we have, that you can invite Reiki. And a lot of times what it's going to help you do is it's going to help you take that pause. Oh, okay. Wait a second. How do I flip that channel? Like Danny said, how do I just tweak it uh, just a little bit? Like Danny said, so that I can move through this, see my solutions, see what's real. And sometimes it is real. And other times we're in this place where we are in story that's not real. Um, and sometimes we're in story that is real also. And so how do we how do we switch when we're in that place and go into our listening for ourselves um, to look for our solutions, to be able to discern what's real and what's not real? And how can we utilize Reiki to do that? Because what Reiki is, one of its fundamental, uh, you know, frequencies is that it's a stress reduction technique. So if we can just place our hands on ourselves and give ourselves Reiki, that can cause us to go into that pause for even just a second to help us clarify what we need, when we need, and um, to, to help us move into just a different state around it. Now it doesn't necessarily fix what we're going through. It doesn't necessarily fix any of it. Sometimes it does. Um, but what it can do is can help us get out of that unconscious swirling energy, kind of that 
chaotic feeling energy and swirling energy and help us come into that grounded energy so that we can we can actually you know help us figure out the situation or if it's not fixable some things aren't if it's not fixable how do we move through the situation from a more heart centered place um and a more conscious place and that can help us sometimes you know that's what we need sometimes so these are the places that reiki can really help as danny said sometimes it is receiving a session or um even like coming to something like this uh, from somebody else because that outside perspective that receiving from another person that kind of third party idea of it is what's going to be the most helpful um, and so there's that piece of it. There's also the idea that as a practitioner, sometimes what people need is to just be heard. So just listening, you can't fix, fix it for people. And even if it's a friend and you're in the place of, um, just, you know, a, a friend, and maybe even they know that you do Reiki and you allow Reiki or they allow you to do Reiki, or maybe not. Maybe they're in the place that you just need to be Reiki in that moment just to listen and not try to fix them. And that's the space that they need. And what they need is to be heard. And that's going to help them shift in the place where they can move through their um, solutions. Danny, I saw you unmute. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, as an example, I mean, even just yesterday, Robin and I had a meeting just to discuss a 15 minute meeting, to discuss some things. And it turned out to be an hour long discussion. And I didn't even know. I didn't even under, I didn't prepare. I didn't, you know, it, she was just listening. And as a Reiki practitioner, to me, the biggest mantra is to say, that's big. That's really big. And we don't need to have a solution. We can just be heard. And when I started my meeting, I didn't know that I had like a 50 pound weight on my chest. But when I got done with the discussion, I'm like, whoa, I feel like a feather. Oh my God, this is amazing. So, um, and again, we, we're all here together in community. That's so huge and to um, support each other. Yeah, it could be little tiny things and really big things. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah thanks, Danny. It's very true. It's very true. And when also Reiki helps us to know when to switch into that listening as well, because that's the other piece of it. Sometimes you just don't even realize. And what, ha what can happen is that as a friend or a family member or a practitioner, um, when somebody is needing to be heard and to listen to Reiki helps us to switch into that listening. And as we were talking yesterday, it was like, oh, Danny needs to be heard right now. I don't need to do anything. She just needs to be heard. And it is big stuff. And um, at the same time, I have always have my surrogate on my desk. And so as I was listening, I grabbed my surrogate and just placed my hands on my surrogate and also sent her Reiki. And it can be that simple sometimes. Or if we don't have a surrogate, I was just going to go into the intention of utilizing Reiki to send it to her. Um, and uh, if I was with uh, just a friend that may, you know, all my friends know that I do Reiki, but I may not I may not be like, oh, do you want me to send you Reiki right now if we're discussing something that's hard for them, um, that we can uh, just activate Reiki for ourselves. And just by being that field of Reiki, you know, they still receive it to the degree that they want to receive it. Um, and uh, that's always helpful as well. So you can, you can do all of those things in the situation where you are in your listening. When we are talking about our own selves and our own journeys and our own manifestations and our own, um, you know, new beginnings or goals, our, um, you know, maybe even our achievements that we want to make, it's not always about, you know, achieving and goals. And sometimes it's about wellness. Sometimes it's about 
um, spiritual things. You know, it's not always about like what we achieve in the physical world. Our new beginnings can be so many different things. Um, there's still this piece of that pausing and that listening. And what do we do when things happen that are out of our control? What do we do um, when things happen that change the direction or make us give us pause? Um, and that is that can be common for um, the the path that we might have set out for ourselves. And sometimes we end up, you know, I'm going to use the word achieve in a very loose sense of the term, um, just because it's an easy one to, uh, uh, it's an easy one to use or manifest. Sometimes we do achieve or manifest the things that we initially set out to do. And other times it's going to take us on an entirely different path. And most of the time in retrospect, you can look back and you can be like, oh, that's what was meant for me anyways. And I am really happy that I am in the place that I didn't, you know, like actually achieve the thing that I initially set out to do. Um, I'm really, I'm really glad about that because it's like, there's this Garth Brooks song that says that sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. And that can be so true sometimes is that we'll look back and we'll, um, we'll look back and we'll say, this is where I'm meant to be. And this is, this path was laid out for me this whole time. And this is where I was meant to be. But when things don't go exactly how we had planned, how we had thought when we're talking about new beginnings and the manifestation that we were um, planning to, to have, um, that initial change of direction, change of trajectory, that's when it can be like, oh, you know, that breath, that big, that, that feeling of what do I do now? And this kind of relates back to like what we were talking about, Reiki on the fly. It's always a tool in your tool bag. And uh, Colleen wrote a great article. We both wrote the article. <laughs> we both wrote the article because you got to use it a lot in parenting. I will tell you that much. And that's what my piece of the, <clears throat> of the article was about, is about how I use it in parenting. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can use Reiki on the fly. Other times you have to go into your patients. How do you go into your patients around the things not manifesting in the timeline that we had originally set out for that? <clears throat> that trusting that we talked about last week, that, um, that kind of surrendering into the plan, um, all of these things that um, can happen when we are in the path of manifesting. I think that there is sometimes, so I believe in the power of manifestation, um, but I do also think that there's sometimes a little bit of this idea that we can have of like, man, you know, intention, manifestation, straight line, and it takes, you know, two weeks and we're good, right? But that's not always the case. And I don't think that, I think that it's pointing it or um, helpful to point out that sometimes it's a winding path. Sometimes, you know, you see that, that meme that's gone around on social media a lot. That is, um, you know, the, the down, up, down, up. Sometimes you go into that little ocean as you're climbing up, down, up, down, up. And then finally you hit that place, the roller coaster. Yeah. You just, finally you hit that place where you set out in the first place, but how do you be patient in that in between time? And that is, a place where Reiki can really come in and help support you in that, help, um, you know, define where you're at, help you in your solutions of where you're at, whether you're doing self Reiki, whether you're doing um, Reiki on the fly, whether you're in your deep practices of Reiki, whether you're in your um, quicker practice of, practices of Reiki, because the energy is filling you with spiritually guided life force energy. And that is leading you, whether it is immediate or if it takes a long time, that is leading you onto a path of wellness. And these manifestations that you may want 
or you may be directed is a better way to say that or guided to these manifestations that you may be guided to um, are on that path of wellness. And sometimes they take years, you know, sometimes you can ask a question, just had this relatively recently. Sometimes you can ask a question um, and you get the answer four years later right? And that is not uncommon when we're talking about that. It's not always your um, two week manifestation. You know, I do, those are possible as well. So I don't want to um, disregard that because that happens as well. And I do believe that as well, but I also think that it is, it is helpful to know that it can take time. It can take different, it can look differently than what you initially thought. And if we're you, if we're going through it in a conscious manner, and if we're going through it in a way that we're using Reiki and our different spiritual tools that we may use, that it ends up leading us to the manifestation in our path of wellness, whether that's a big thing or whether that is one step forward on our journey to that whatever that means, because we may, our, you know, our path of wellness might be, um, I know for me, it's been in the past, um, uh, I want to um, help me with my anxiety, which it has over the course of years. And um, it took a while. And how do you be patient in, in the interim? And what tools does um, does Reiki help me and solutions? Does it help me to get to that end goal, to get to that end place? Um, and being in the patience of that and listening into the conscious solutions that Reiki and uh, my spiritual tools can help me with to get me there. And ultimately, as I have been able to move, as I've been able to get to the place where don't really have anxiety anymore. I don't need external tools um, like medication anymore. Um, and that's not everybody. So I'm not dismissing that. It's just my, been my journey because the Reiki energy and, and doing the work over uh, numerous amounts of years has helped me get to that place of wellness. But I'll tell you what, it wasn't a fix. It wasn't a two week manifestation. It had all different turns and different things that I didn't know were taking place that it led me to there. And eventually somewhere along the line, I realized that this has happened and this has manifested because that was some, one of my intentions. That was something that I wanted to have Reiki help me with. And it did, but it was a long and winding road. And all of these different things that came in that were seemingly unrelated got me there in the end, because that's what Reiki energy helps us do. It moves us into a path of wellness, even if that's over a very long period of time. And so, you know, it is about the patience around that. There is a certain level of um, trust and surrender that I think that you kind of learn over time and you learn um, some of us are better than that at others. Let me say that. Cause some of you are like, I'm full surrender, full trust. And um, you know, I think I know that I am now, you know, but it took me a very long time to get there just because of the type of personality I am and, you know, all the different things that can cause us to not go into that and not full surrender. Like, you know, I, I also have, you know, a, um, I don't want to say not full surrender because I trust in the energy and I trust where it's going to lead me now, but at the same time, I'm not just all, like, yeah, wherever it leads me, you know, that's, that's all great. Like I have goals. I have things that I want to accomplish. I have, um, personal life things that I want all of this work to help me with. I use it in parenting. I use it in my personal relationships. I use it in all of these different places, um, as well as work goals, physical health goals, you know, all of these goals that are, are real tangible things. So it's not just like, yeah, wherever it leads me, but I also will set an intention. And I do trust that the energy will get me there eventually, whether it's very direct or whether it's a winding path, or it's going to take me into the place that I didn't know I needed. And that is, I have trust in that. And it doesn't mean that that detour isn't like, 
challenging. It isn't really hard. It's that those things that are out of our control are, um, you know, they can even be debilitating. And so there, that doesn't mean that that doesn't exist within it. It just means that even through those times, I'm using the Reiki energy to help me through those times as well. Leaning on support, um, using sessions, you, trying to move through it as consciously as possible, even though sometimes that's the most challenging thing to do. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And, I, and it just community. I mean, this community and even people le listening later is it can be, I mean, I have people in this community right now I'm looking at that we we speak to. It doesn't have to be, a, like I said, an hour long session. It's just checking in and just um, being like, whoa, this is happening. And and uh, it could be exciting too. It's not a negative thing. You'd be like, oh my gosh, my daughter got engaged. I want to share this with somebody or holy cow, I have to move. And it's very stressful. I mean, there's all different kinds of things, but just having community to me, and this one is really special. Um, just utilizing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. I do love that. Um, because sometimes too, the idea of community can be like, you know, especially if you're shy or, um, it can be hard to, uh, engage in and, um, and I do think that it is one of those things that can be so um, supportive and so helpful to have that piece of it. And one of the benefits of technology is if you don't have a local community, um, especially I know that can be the case for many people in, in Reiki that they don't have a local community with it, that you can find things online like this, like others. Um, that are a match for you and you're there to support each other through different life milestones. Even if we don't know about your individual uh, milestones, you know, or different things that you might be going through. Um, like, let's say you don't feel comfortable sharing it in the chat or something like that. There's just the intention here that um, there's the intention here that we have that still for each other, even if you haven't shared it. And Reiki is an enlightened energy and it knows where to go and what to do. Um, and yeah, it's, um, you know, we helped get each other through this pandemic, you know, and we still have a lot of stuff going on with all of that. And not all of us are out of it and um, not, you know, I, I don't need to go into all the details. We all know. Um, but, uh, you know, having this community as an anchor every single week was really helpful, regardless of so many of our differing beliefs around all of it. Um, as I've shared in this group and on the podcast, uh, I was going through long COVID um, for almost two years and having this community and my own Reiki community, I couldn't have gone through it with without that. Um, it helped go through, well, I would have, it just would have been a lot worse. And it was really helpful to have the people that I could rely on, even though it didn't fix it. Um, I still was able to go through it a lot more consciously, uh, than I would have otherwise. So there is that piece of it is when those things happen that are outside of the playbook that we had, um, the finding community can be really helpful even if you're just there listening and knowing that these people support you and they bring in the energy to help support you um, when you are going through um, the different challenging times. So, but, you know, there are all seasons of life, as somebody said in the, um, the chat that, uh, and new beginnings is one of them, you know, there's the summer, which is just full on abundance. There's the fall, which is harvest. And there's the winter, which is rest. And um, all of these different periods in our life, they can be, they're fractals of each other. They can be micro from our day to day, and they can be macro from um, our, our seasons of life in general, the cycles of life that we're in. Um, and just know that Reiki energy is always there to support you in the ways that you need spiritual tools in the ways that you need to try to move through it as consciously as possible as we're all on our path towards living 
our life as consciously as possible in whatever way that means for you, because that means so differently to each of us and in, in the way that we express, we have our life expression. Um, and so anyway, so um, yeah, it's been an interesting topic and um, it's springtime. And uh, so new beginnings can be a part of that. And sometimes it does take patience and, um, you know, then we've got these big energies. So 